So, 3D printing is pretty good nowadays, and it's capable of a lot more than printing small plastic pieces. In fact, it's so good that one company in America called Relativity Space has 3D printed an entire rocket and launched it mostly successfully. That's right, a rocket that was almost entirely 3D printed actually launched, and it looked incredible. So let's take a look at what, how, and why it's a great idea to print a rocket. This is the Terran 1 rocket from Relativity Space, and 85% of this rocket was 3D printed using the world's largest 3D metal printer. That includes printing the engine and the fuel tank, and it actually makes a lot of sense to do this. By 3D printing it, you can design more complicated shapes and components without worrying about how they fit together. Instead of having to assemble the parts out of many manufactured pieces, you just print it as one single piece, making the process quicker, simpler, and much less likely to go wrong or fall apart during launch. It also makes iterating your designs easier, since you can try radically different things right after each other. You can print pretty much any shape or configuration you'd like, without worrying about how to actually manufacture it, like a traditional rocket company does. The material they print with is an aluminium alloy, although I think the exact composition is a trade secret. There is an incredible Veritasium video where Derek gets a tour of the factory and interviews the CEO and co-founder Tim Ellis. I'll link that video in all of the usual places and it is absolutely worth a watch. I think my favourite thing I learned from that video is that because the metal warps slightly as it cools, they actually 3D print components pre-warped and then cooling them unwarps the metal to give the exact shape required, which is crazy cool to me. In fact, in physics, we often refer to time as a dimension as well, so I reckon they could even call this a 4D printed rocket. This makes it sound even cooler and is totally consistent with Einstein's general relativity. According to Relativity, the company, the rockets they make have a hundred times less parts than traditionally manufactured rockets, and they can make everything for the rocket in just 60 days. The next rocket being developed by Relativity Space is called the Terran R, and this one will eventually be totally reusable too, making it even more efficient. As far as I can tell, the Terran one that was just tested wasn't reusable at all, but that is something that is definitely going to be achievable very soon. So let's take another look at the first test, completed on March 23rd, 2023. It was super cool. The mission was named Good Luck, Have Fun, and they certainly did. Interestingly, you can see that while the rocket is painted with a special coating to reduce static on the outside, and with relativity livery across it, when it comes to launch, it seems to actually be totally white. That's just ice building up on the outside of the rocket. This is common for most launches. The fuels they use usually involve something like liquid oxygen, which has to be super cold to even be a liquid so ice often forms on the outside of rockets. The cold fuel is actually pumped over the engines and tanks to cool them as they burn the fuel, to stop them melting. Otherwise rockets would just fall apart due to the high temperatures involved in a launch. All that said, there seems to be a lot more ice here than we usually see, and I suspect this might be because of the rough surface produced by 3D printing the rocket. There is a lot more texture than a traditional rocket, which apparently doesn't affect the aerodynamics at all, but would give moisture something to stick to and crystallize into ice, meaning we see a bit more ice than usual. We've also just mentioned the fuel, so let's take a look at this gorgeous blue flame that Terran 1 produced. This is because it uses methane as a fuel, along with liquid oxygen. This is a much cleaner and more efficient fuel than something like kerosene, which is used by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. It's a great choice for what will be a reusable rocket, since it leaves less residue when burned, so cleaning and refurbishing the tanks ready for subsequent uses will be easier and faster. It also led to these stunning blue flames in the night sky, looking both beautiful and familiar to those of us with gas hobs which also burn methane. These diamond shapes in the photos and footage are called shock diamonds, and they form in supersonic plumes when the engine is operated in the atmosphere and they really add to the beauty of the launch. If you were paying attention at the beginning of the video, you'll have noticed that I said the test launch was mostly successful. This test was to ensure that a printed rocket could actually survive the huge forces of a launch, and specifically, they wanted to check that the rocket performed well as it passed through something called max Q. That refers to the point of maximum dynamic pressure, 
It's the point when the rocket is under the most strain, moving fast and still in a thick atmosphere. So showing that it can survive this is a huge achievement. All in all, the launch did go well. The nine first stage engines worked well and they fired for more than two minutes, including passing through Max-Q. These then separated, but sadly, the second stage engines appear not to have ignited. In the onboard video, we seem to see the stage two engine sputtering, but not really ever getting going. The velocity decreasing and the rocket eventually fell back into the Atlantic Ocean. This is the LD. There has been a T plus anomaly with stage two. LC, please begin anomaly procedure section 25. So some failure, but mostly a huge success. They reach space, but not orbit. In the initial report that Relativity have just released, it sounds like the issue was twofold. Firstly, the engine valves on the second stage engine didn't open as fast as they should have. And secondly, the oxygen pump also didn't reach a high enough pressure. Due to these things, the gas generator in the engine didn't ignite and the engine didn't reach full power. And hence, orbit wasn't reached. It now seems that Relativity are moving straight into focusing on the larger Terran R rocket. But given how fast they can print them, I'm hoping it won't be too long before we see another launch heading into the sky. Hopefully this time, it will reach orbit as well. That actually means that this recent test might well be the only launch of a Terran 1 that we ever see. Kind of like SpaceX going straight from Falcon 1 to Falcon 9. As a result of this test, the Terran R will actually be less 3D printed than originally planned. Relativity have shown that they can 3D print the fuel tanks and they can survive a launch. But it currently isn't actually the fastest or cheapest or easiest way of doing it. The new plan for Terran R is to use traditional tank barrels but to also make the Terran R larger due to market demand. And they want to compete with the likes of ULA and Blue Origin. They seem to be saying that they now know what they can print and moving forward, they will print as much as makes sense, but not do everything just for the sake of it. Probably a smart way of doing things. It's also worth saying that there was actually no payload on this test flight since it was just a test, but it did carry a ceremonial and sentimental metal ring weighing about 1.5 kilograms, and which was one of the first test prints that Relativity Space ever did. It's cute, but it's kind of sad that it's now lost to the sea. What is great for the company is that since they can make these rockets cheaply, they can also sell them cheaply. Currently, they're offering to launch your satellites for a mere $12 million, which is actually way less than the 67 it costs to go on a Falcon 9. So that's pretty cool too. Let me know if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions down below. And now is a great time to subscribe to the channel. That's because I've been working on some 3D printing of my own for a video, and I can't wait to share what we've been up to. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.